Hello folks and welcome back to the channel and in part one we have been trying to start the motor of Old Sporty and we did succeed it took a bit of time now that's not the end of that motor effort I'm still going to take the motor out and I'll change the fuel pump I might change even the camshaft to a canned camshaft as some people alluded to we'll tune it we're going to get it all fixed up putting new seals and joints up all this is going to happen once the engine is out of the motor but right now I have another problem the wheels don't turn anymore you know it's really tough and in fact when I was picking up the car I had to winch it out of its position and onto the trailer and the wheels were barely turning it was really tough to move it inside the garage I had to put it on rollers to move it around because the front wheels and the rear wheels are seized the front wheels have discs and they are not all that badly corroded so what I suspect is that the pistons uh, that are inside the calibers are not retracting anymore and most likely those pistons will be totally gone and corroded so I might have to recondition it so we're going to take the wheels off we're going to take the calipers apart uh, and then we'll probably will have to overhaul them and of course we'll flush the whole uh, brake system as well in the back it's a different story there I'm having drum brakes let's take the wheels off so we can have a closer look The discs are not looking too bad and they are not really worn at all um, and it's very smooth and there's no edge on it so that's all right but these calibers they look really in a bad state so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the calibers now and uh, then try to take the disc off so we can recondition the whole thing uh, before I'm going to take off the caliber I will have to remove the brake pads and they look in pretty bad shape so I have to knock out these rods here remove the clips and then try to wiggle my way out of it once I have a little bit of play I will undo the big bolts here in the back that are holding the brake caliber onto the upright so they drill the hole through the bolt and then they use a the very thin wire um, you know just to keep them in place normally you should have a metal plate for that so we'll start by removing the clips now oh, that goes easy I'm going to spread a bit of DWD-40 on all this. Um, always works great. I don't care about the brake pads. I will change them anyway. Now, I will have to knock them out from that direction outward. So let's see if we can get it out. Yeah, they're coming. the first one all right now we'll do the second one and uh, that should go quite easy that's at least a good start but now comes the tough part get the brake pads out in one way or another and that's going to be the tough part. I see there's already somebody has been messing around with it. We'll try a spanner. Let's see. And that moves back a bit. Did you see that? Yeah. That's good. Now I've got some space here. And I will do the other side exactly the same way. Put the spanner up and, and just squeeze it. Yeah, it's moving. There we go. I think I will have sufficient play now. This is loose. This one is not. A little bit more. I have a little bit of luck, I might be able to get the brake pad out. That's one. Oof. Doesn't look all that good. It's movable, but not removable yet. I 
there it comes. So now I have a free spinning disc. That's exactly what I wanted. Brake pads went out reasonable easy. Uh, so now I have to remove the big bolts in the back that are holding the caliber to the upright. Uh, those are a socket 19 and I'm going to use um, my hammer because it's going to be a bit tough to get them off. There we go. See how little brake fruit comes out of it? Now I'm going to tape this all the way up so it's going to be out of the way. So that's it guys, that's number one. Now this is spinning freely so I'm quite happy with that. Here is 20 squeak plates, the brake pads and they really look shitty to be very honest and the locking pins and here is the caliber so it has two pistons, one on this side, one on the other side. So now I'm going to clean all this up and I'm going to get the pistons out. Now getting the pistons out might be a bit tricky. The way I'm going to do this is by applying air pressure over here and hopefully the pistons will pop out. I need to get the pistons out of this uh, brake caliber. So this is a piston and that's one and they both have to come out. Uh, so I'm going to press them out with compressed air. I connected a enforced um, hose to my inlet uh, where normally my brake fluid would connect and I have my normal blowing gun that I use on my compressor and I'm going to try to blow them out. Now the complication I'm having is that I have two uh, pistons. Now normally if you have one that's not an issue but now two is a bit of an issue because if one is stuck the other one will pop out and once it's popped out there's no way to get the other one out. So I will have to do a little bit of inventive thinking. So let me place it like this so you guys can have a good look. I'm not sure which one is going to pop first, but we'll see. And here it is. And it ruptured actually the seal, but that's all right. Now that's the rubber seal is to open up the caliber and already undid the bolts here. Uh, that was a bit tough to get them out but it worked all right and now I can split the thing. There we go and with this I now can continue. So this is the good side but the other one that's the one where that piston is stuck. So now I have separated the clamp. I reconnected my pressure hose and now on the inside here we go um, this is where the bleeding hole is and that's also where the braking fluid is coming into this cylinder so now I'm going to block that off with a piece of rubber like so and a clamp it may pop actually there we go it took a lot of time to get this apart and to get actually the pistons out of the calibers. Uh, one is still all right. This one is a bit tacky. The edges are broken off. They were already broken off when I took it apart and I broke a little bit more off. Okay, it is what it is. Um, the inside looks not too bad. And of course, now we're going to recondition them by getting new seals, uh, new dust seals. These other dust seals, they're totally gone. But inside you have a square uh, rubber and that's the one that uh, forces the piston back when it, it comes out. So if the piston comes out, the rubber deforms a bit and when you let the pedal go, the brake pedal that is, then that rubber tries to come back to its normal condition and it pulls that cylinder back. Now obviously the cylinder is like this. Um, and if that rubber is worn out, then it will be stuck or if it's corroded, it will be stuck. So I'm going to remove these rubbers now and then I'm going to soda blast uh, these clamps. To get the rubber out, I'm going to use a small little screwdriver. 
and try to prime it out. There we go. This is the rubber. And I'm just going to get a new one for that. I have already cleaned one caliber. Now I'm going to clean the second one. We blasted the calibers and now they are reasonable clean and now we can start fitting the rubbers as soon as we have them together with the new pistons. And the back is not much better, you can barely turn it around so that also needs to come off the drum and then we need to do an inspection at the inside. This might be a bit tough to get it off but we'll see how that goes. And now we need to try to get the drum off, I already sprayed some DW40 on it. So I'm going to use a hammer and knock gently on the sides. And I know I should not be hammering with a hammer on a hammer, but this is very light work, so I think this is coming out. A little bit. Well, I think the uh, brakes are holding a bit now. It's about out. Yeah, let's see. It looks like the rear brake system has been renewed not that long ago. So I'm going to take all this apart, save it, but I will replace this pump here. Those are not expensive and not worthwhile uh, to restore it yourself. Meanwhile, I have uh, cleaned up the brake drum itself. And here is the brake drum, completely cleaned up, as you can see, inside and outside. So that took a bit of work, but now that is looking quite good and it can go back on for now until I take the whole thing apart. And I can't continue building the brake calibers because I do not have the spare parts for that. So I need to order those seals, I need to order those rubbers so I can put all those back together with new brake pads. And then we should be good in the front. Uh, as you have noticed, the brake pads were in a very bad condition and also the brake calibers didn't work too well. The pistons got stuck, at least two of them were really stuck. So I'm going to buy also new pistons for those calibers. In the back, we were a bit better off. The brakes, they looked fairly new or recently been renewed, but recently is then, of course, 10, 15 years ago, but it hasn't been driven wet. So that's the good thing. The drums in the back, we sandblasted them and they are now looking fairly okay. So they are ready to be mounted again. And I will replace the small brake cylinders on the rear axle on each wheel. That is not worthwhile rebuilding it because that's a low cost item. And then when all that is done, we'll flush the complete braking system and we will have to check out what the main brake cylinders are doing because that I don't know yet on how they look like. But that's something for the next video. Meanwhile, all the parts have arrived and for the back, I have brand new brake cylinders and this is the one that I'm going to fit in the back. I have two of them, they are not very expensive, so it wasn't worthwhile to repair or overhaul the one that was inside. So I'm going to fit brand new ones out there. But for the front calibers, I decided to overhaul the front calibers. This is one set for one caliber and that's what's inside. Two pistons and here they are. Two rubber seals, uh, these are the square ones that go inside to the cylinder. These are the ones that are retracting the piston once you let the brakes go. Then two dust covers with the clip that holds it into place. A small seal that goes in between the two calibers. Some special grease to be used to grease the pistons. And then of course two rings to hold the dust cover into place. So we're going to rebuild for sure the front calipers as soon as they're dried up 
because I just painted them. After we shot blasted the calibers, I took them apart and we cleaned it all up. The same thing happened with the rear drums. We shot blasted them and we cleaned them all up. And I painted them now for the first time with a zinc based paint. And here that is uh, to prevent it from further rusting. By the way, the fourth part of the caliber is still dry and it's hanging up in the air. You'll see it in a few minutes. Now, once this is all dry, I will paint the rear drums in shiny black. But the brake calibers I will paint with special paint uh, dedicated for uh, brake calibers. And this is going to be a silver kind of paint. And a set of new brake pads. And I went for the ATE set because that is exactly uh, the brake caliber that is mounted on this vehicle. Um, I always buy pretty good quality and I went for the, as you can see, the original quality. And together with the new brake pads, I ordered up an original kit from ATE with auxiliary kit to mount the brake pads. Anti-squeak panels, some springs, locking pins, four brand new ones, split pins. But I also ordered separately a set of new flex hoses. And then I finally have the locking panel that you need to bend over to hold the bolts into place once you mount the caliber on the upright. So this is all the stuff we're gonna start mounting now to get those brakes sorted out. And now it's time to paint the caliber with brake caliber paint. The next thing I'm going to do is to take off the brake disc itself. And therefore, I need to remove the cap. All right. I think that is loose. It looks like it's nicely greased and there should be a split pen here and let's see, oh, there it is. And that's something we'll have to replace afterwards. Okay, it's coming. There we go. And here is the bearing. Try to get it out. Put the outer bearing. The next thing I'm going to do is to remove the disc from the wheel hub and therefore I have to remove these little metal bars here that are locking the bolt in place. The next step is to undo these bolts and they might be very hard to undo but I'm going to give it a try. That went quite easy. There we go. It's really stuck. So these are the locking bars. So now I need to get the disc off the wheel hub and the way to do that is to support the disc with two wooden blocks and then knock in the center so knock out the wheel hub but for that I'm going to use also a piece of wood so I don't damage anything. There we go. 
So we're going to uh, clean up the wheel hub completely. Um, so I'm going to soda blast this um, and making sure that I don't damage any of the seals. I may put new bearings up. And then, of course, we're also going to clean up the disc because this disc is still very intact. So there's no reason to replace it. I'm just going to blast it as well. There's no scratches on it or anything like that. So we'll clean all this up and then we can put it all back together. And while I'm at it, I might as well clean up the upright and the upper and the lower wishbone. And therefore, I will take them off the chassis and they are held in place with these big bolts. Now, there's one here, one on that side, one there and one there. Now, right now I have a screwdriver in it because I already removed the bolts, not to make this video too long. And of course, we have to undo the bolt of the, on the shock absorber on the top and on the bottom. So now I should be able to remove the shock absorber easily. There we go. That's one. And now with everything disconnected, I should be able to remove the wishbone. Let's see if we can do this. Get it out in the bottom first. Yep. There we go. So I can now start blasting this and repainting it. There isn't a lot left over on this side. Suspension is removed, brakes are removed, steering is kind of removed. So now I'm going to do the other side so then I can start blasting it all together and paint it. So let me do that and then I'll come back once everything is painted and we're going to put it back together.